I, 28-year-old male, have lived in America with my Bangladeshi Muslim parents since 2004. My whole life I've been told by my parents that they sacrificed everything to come to America and that I should be grateful for the life they provided me, which I am. I started dating when I was around 19. When my parents found out about my then Sri Lankan Hindu girlfriend, to keep it short, they strongly disapproved, refused to let me into the house, refused to feed me. The house turned into a war zone and my relationship with my parents strained very badly. After a month, I eventually told them I broke up with her. I was still in uni, could not yet support myself, which settled things again before eventually breaking up with her one, two years later. After being traumatized by dating, I did not date again until I was 23, 24. The experience made my parents realize they could lose me, so they started being encouraging with dating, hoping I get married eventually. I ended up dating an American woman. By this point, I had developed a better relationship with my parents, especially my mother, and so for my sake, they reluctantly accepted it. For the time I dated her, my parents were accepting and seemed okay with it. For unrelated reasons, I broke up with her. With this news, my parents were overjoyed and broke their silence. They were so thankful for the breakup, did not approve of the huge cultural difference, and hoped that I pursue a woman with a similar culture to ours. Again, several years later, around 2022, I meet my current partner, currently 29-year-old female. She is Indian Muslim. I am much happier with her at peace, and we have been actively discussing marriage. We both make a lot of money and are fully established in our careers. I told my mother about her when I first started dating her. I recently introduced her to my parents, given we are at a serious stage and wanting to move forward with marriage. However, since introducing her to my parents, my parents have made terrible comments about her. Stuff like, her skin is too dark. She is too short. 12 inches of height difference between us. Indian Muslims are not real Muslims, plus two different from Bangla Muslims. And I'm a far better partner than her in all departments. Horrible comments. The worst one was, she, 29, is too old. I am 28, and a marrying woman should be under 25. Therefore, they are very unhappy and do not fully approve of my partner but they will reluctantly allow us to marry if that is what I want. They keep insisting they are being supportive, but expressing their views because they love me. My parents' views have upset me greatly. I ended up having a massive argument with them for speaking about my partner that way. And I am staying with a friend for a few days. They were such terrible comments. I honestly thought my parents would be more approving since my partner is more aligned with our culture but the way they spoke about her is just horrible. They keep insisting on the phone that they are telling me the truth about her because they love me and don't believe they have done anything wrong. They also keep insisting they will begrudgingly move ahead, and that is the same as a full blessing. I have no idea why, but I also feel a crippling feeling of guilt now for staying with my partner since my parents do not fully approve who has done nothing wrong. I hate that my mind has been polluted and poisoned by their comments, and I hate myself for not being able to brush off their comments. I eventually told them that the news is new, and for them to think about it for a few weeks, since maybe it was a shock to them. In the meantime, I have no idea what to do with the feeling of guilt, and feel horrible for my poor partner, who has done nothing wrong because I feel unsure of my relationship all of a sudden. Any advice or words of wisdom would be very appreciated. Edit one update. I spoke to my parents after a few days and my father said, the only big hesitancy left for them is the age. That is that she is too old. Another fight, and I guess my stay at my friends is extended LOL now. For a few comments before the update. Comment one. I think it's pretty clear that no one will be good enough for your parents and they plan to continue using their approval or withdrawal of approval as a cudgel to beat you into obeisance for the rest of their lives. Do you want to be the sort of man who continually breaks the hearts of women he supposedly loves to stay in discriminatory, classist mommy and daddy's good graces? Or do you want to be your own person who knows deep in his heart what he stands for and who he loves? But seriously, 
reread what you wrote. She's not marriageable because her skin is too dark? Because being approximately your same age makes her too old. I guess because she's primarily supposed to be a vessel for your offspring, more than a life partner. Are you the sort of person who allows people to speak this way to you about anyone? Never mind the woman you are supposed to love enough to marry? No? Then freaking act like it. Tell them you're marrying her. You love her. She is, in fact, the your better half. And if you hear even a freaking hint of this disgusting nonsense from them again, they will not be invited to the wedding. Final warning. Again, what kind of person do you want to be? Answer that question and you'll understand what you need to do. Doing the right thing isn't always easy. Comment two. I know it's difficult not to feel guilty when you've been raised with parents as intrusive and small-minded as yours are. But please do not feel guilty about marrying the person who you love and makes you happy. Your parents are the ones who should feel guilty for putting you in this position. They are the ones here that are causing the issues. This is not on you at all. You say you make a lot of money, right? Why are you still living with your parents? Get out of their house and away from their controlling nature and ridiculous worldview. Unless you actually marry someone they approve of, you are never going to have an easy relationship with them. So unless you decide to break up with your partner and limit your dating pool to only people your parents would approve of, I would be putting my foot down with them or start cutting them out of your life. Now for the update, thanks for sticking around. A lot has happened since the last post. So I went back to talk to my parents, hoping to clear the air. But as soon as I walked in, I could tell something was off. My mom was sitting at the kitchen table, her eyes red from crying. My dad was pacing back and forth, a letter in his hand. Turns out, my ex, the American woman I dated, had sent them a letter. She wrote about how we were meant to be together and how she regretted our breakup. She even hinted at converting to Islam for me. My parents, they ate it up. They started saying, maybe this was a sign that I should reconsider. I was furious. How could she do this? We hadn't spoken in years. I told my parents it was a no-go, that I was with someone else now, someone I loved. They didn't listen. They said I was making a mistake, that I was throwing away a perfect match. I couldn't believe it. After all this time, they still couldn't see how happy I was with my current partner. I stormed out and went straight to my friend's place. I needed to cool off. But then my partner called. She was upset, said someone had been spreading rumors about her at work, questioning her character. It didn't take long to figure out it was my parents' doing. They had reached out to some distant relatives who just happened to work with her, telling them all sorts of nonsense about how she wasn't right for me. I confronted my parents over the phone. They denied everything, said they were just concerned for me. But I knew better. I apologized to my partner, promised to sort it out, she was hurt, but understood it wasn't my fault. We decided to lay low for a while, let things settle. A few days later, my mom called, crying again. She said they were sorry that they didn't mean to cause trouble. They just wanted what was best for me. They asked me to come home, talk things through. I was hesitant, but I agreed. I missed my home, and part of me hoped we could fix things. When I got there, they were all apologies, promising to accept my partner. But then, my dad said something that made my blood boil. He offered me a deal. They'd fully accept my partner if I agreed to move back in with them until the wedding. They wanted to guide us, make sure we were doing things right. It was like they were trying to control my life all over again. I wanted to scream to tell them off, but I didn't. I just nodded and said I'd think about it. My partner and I talked it over and she was against it, said it felt like a trap. I knew she was right, but I couldn't help feeling torn. They were my parents, after all. So here I am, stuck in the middle. My partner is amazing, supportive, but I can see the strain this is putting on her. And my parents, they're acting like they're doing me a favor, like they're the victims in all this. I know I should stand up to them, make a clean break, but it's hard. They're my family, and despite everything, I still want their approval. I'm not sure what's going to happen next, but I'm trying to hold on to what's important. I just wish it wasn't so complicated. Thanks for reading. Thank My boyfriend cheats with a girl from the pickleball court. 
after five years together. So I leave him broken and build a better life without him. Hi guys. My boyfriend, 23 years old, and I, 22 years old, have been together for almost five years. We met at the beginning of college and stuck together throughout it. Since graduating, we both moved in with our parents to start saving cash before we move in together. We usually go about two to three weeks without seeing each other, and he has always been someone who doesn't really enjoy texting or calling. We have had a couple of rough patches that occur mostly when we are apart. I've been cheated on in the past and can be a bit insecure. He is also significantly more attractive than I am, and the people around us tend to still flirt with him, despite knowing I exist. Anyway, we are both really into pickleball. He plays pretty much every day after work. Of course, he meets a lot of people when he's playing, and everyone wants to play with him because he's quite good and hoping to play professionally. There is a girl, 24 years old, there who always wants to be his partner and consistently flirts with him calling him attractive and commenting about his body. Whenever I'm around, she makes a point to ignore me and talk to just my boyfriend. This doesn't really bother me, but I've taken to joking about it with him when he goes out for drinks with friends and she's there. Recently, a new girl, 27 years old, has moved into the area and taken up pickleball. For the sake of the story, I'm gonna call her Joe. I made a joke about how Joe might take the place of the other girl who had been flirting with him at pickleball over the phone. This was during one of our calls while we were apart. I noticed he got pretty quiet, so I said, Uh-oh, she's already flirting with you. Not another one. He said he didn't know, but they play together pretty much every day. Joe likes to text him and ask when he will be playing so that she can join in. I mentioned that it was nice for him to have people he enjoyed playing with, and that was about the end of the conversation. Fast forward a couple of days, and I hadn't heard from my boyfriend all day when asking him what his plans were. I was kind of freaked out because he usually at least responds every couple of hours. I checked Life 360 and noticed he was in a parking lot. I didn't want to assume the worst because sometimes that app isn't the most accurate. A couple of hours later, I got a text that he was out listening to music and drinking with two friends. I said that sounded like fun and asked who with. Joe and one of her work friends. But the friend had to leave early. No big deal as long as nothing is going on. I'm sure she knows he is in a relationship. I planned a visit for the following weekend and was excited to meet my boyfriend's new friends. Upon arriving at his house, my boyfriend was not there. He knew what time I would arrive, but he was playing pickleball with Joe. When he finally got home, he asked if I wanted to go out to dinner with his friends. We met up at a restaurant and I asked which one was Joe. Joe didn't want to come. His other friend commented, yeah, Joe found out you were in a relationship with him. So she had been hanging out with my boyfriend thinking he was single. I wonder why my boyfriend didn't tell her. The next day, I finally got to meet Joe. She seemed to be friendly when other people were listening, but not very nice when it was just us talking. She made several comments under her breath while we were playing and continued being flirty with my boyfriend. Yay, also, that weekend my boyfriend and I played in a tournament together. She came to watch him and congratulate him when he won. I finally asked my boyfriend about Joe, when I noticed he was texting her constantly. To keep a long story a little bit shorter, he admitted that he didn't tell her I existed, and she was very upset when she found out I did. He also mentioned that she was attractive and he got butterflies in his stomach when they were out one night together. This launched into a conversation about our life together and what this means. Many tears later, my boyfriend decided he did not know exactly what to do. The timing was not ideal because I was flying out of the country for a few weeks. I asked him to avoid being with her alone until I got back and we could talk again. This morning, I woke up to a text that he was taking her out to dinner to talk about it all. I don't really know what to do. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one. Girl, you are 22 years old. You will have so many more opportunities and significantly better options. You've been with him since high school and he is all you know. So you are thinking this is what you want. And maybe it is. But in all likelihood, you're gonna find much better options out there. Break up with his punk butt and when you travel abroad, meet a nice and cute foreign guy to sweep you off your feet for a few weeks. That'll soften the blow. 
Comment 2. OP, he doesn't seem to want to be in this relationship anymore. He didn't tell her because he was interested. Think about that. He isn't sure and keeping you as an option. A committed person would make it clear they have a significant other. He didn't respect your request to not see her and is taking her out to discuss their relationship. It's a date. He is treating you awfully. Now for the update. Thanks for sticking around for this update. So after that dinner, things went from bad to worse. My boyfriend, let's call him Mark, and Joe had their talk and he came clean about everything. He told me they decided to just be friends. I wanted to believe him, but you know how gut feelings are. A week later, I came back from my trip and Mark was acting weird, like he was hiding something. I did a little snooping, I know, not my proudest moment, and found out he'd been seeing Joe behind my back. They weren't just playing pickleball, they were playing each other. I was devastated. I confronted him and we had a huge fight. He said it was nothing serious, but I couldn't shake the feeling of betrayal. I decided to stay with a friend for a while to clear my head. That's when I ran into an old friend from college, Sarah, who had been through something similar. She told me how she caught her ex cheating and how she got through it. Talking to her made me realize I deserved better. Meanwhile, Mark's life started to unravel. Turns out Joe was also seeing another guy. And when Mark found out, he was crushed. He came to me, begging for forgiveness, saying he'd made the biggest mistake of his life. But I was done. I told him it was over for good this time. Just when I thought I could move on, I got a call from Mark's mom. Mark had gotten into a pickleball accident and was in the hospital with a broken leg. Despite everything, I went to see him. He was all alone. Even his pickleball friends hadn't shown up. Seeing him like that, I couldn't help but feel a twinge of pity, but I also felt a sense of closure. I realized that his actions had led him here, and I needed to let go. I focused on myself, got a new job, and even started playing pickleball again but just for fun this time. I heard through the grapevine that Mark's professional pickleball dreams were on hold because of his injury. And Joe, she moved on to the next guy. It's funny how life works out sometimes. Thanks for reading this far. It's been a wild ride, but I'm looking forward to what's next. My wife ignores my ADD and makes life decisions without me. So I take control and show her who really calls the shots. My wife, 30 years old, and I, 36 years old, have been together for almost three years. This is my second marriage, her first. We've passed the honeymoon phase and are trying to figure out life together now that the shine has dulled a bit. I am so thankful to have her in my life. She is a wonderful partner, and I hate the possibility of hurting her, even unintentionally. Lately, we've been having the same disagreement over my attention level while we're watching a show. She will make a comment sometimes about the show, sometimes not. More often than not, I will not hear her. It's not that she's not talking loudly enough because last night she said she was practically yelling at me. I didn't hear any of it. I was way too focused on the episode we were watching. As a bit of background, this is something I have dealt with my entire life. As a kid, I would sit down and read a book. People would talk to me and I simply wouldn't hear them. They would have to come up real close and yell my name or tap me to get my attention. It was a point of contention in my first marriage as well. This only happens when we were watching TV. I try to be quite attentive most of the time, mainly because one of the things that attracted me most to her was that we could talk about anything for hours. I really enjoy talking with her, and it makes me sad that she is trying to talk with me. And I am, albeit unintentionally, ignoring her and I have absolutely no qualms about talking during a show. I do it myself sometimes. I've considered trying to get a referral to see a psychiatrist for ADD evaluation, but she thinks that I'm taking it to an extreme and that I should be able to just hear her. Another part of this is that it isn't consistent. In other people's houses with other people, I don't have this issue. I think that it's a comfort thing. My brain has stored the information about my surroundings at home and shuts down everything apart from the TV. She seems to take it personally that she's the reason. It was particularly frustrating to her when a few months back, she mentioned that an actor on the show we were watching was in another one of our shows. I didn't respond and shortly afterward, I said to her essentially the same thing about the actor. She got a little mad and said, 
Are you kidding me? I just said that. I apologized and said I didn't hear her, but I do wonder if she believes me. I want to validate my wife's feelings about not being heard, but I have a hard time separating that from my own feelings of just being a shitty husband. How can I show my wife that I do care about her and want to hear her, but that in that short time in the evening, while watching TV, my body does not want to cooperate? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, get the referral. My mom thought I was just dealing with teen stuff and dragged her feet getting me help for my depression and anxiety. It was a rude awakening for her at my counseling interview when I bawled my eyes out talking about how I had contemplated methods of unalived since I was in the sixth grade and seeing the ladies I spoke to putting me on the unalived risk list to get me paired with a counselor faster was medical validation that proved to her things were not normal. It sucks your wife needs proof, but life you're diagnosed and treated, then you can have the conversation about being understanding of each other and not dismissing what the other is telling you like you just know better. Good luck with the ADHD. Comment two, I have struggled with intense focus and the need to pull away from what I'm focused on. Wife and I came to an agreement where she makes sure I'm making eye contact. It's just a thing about people who can do hyper focus. You can't just hear her obviously because you're not. So she needs to meet you halfway and make sure you're not in the zone. But you also might need to talk about the joy of being in the zone and how sometimes it's nice to be allowed to be that focused. We also struggled with this a bit. If I'm in my office making beats, I want those two or three hours of uninterrupted time Unless it's an important must be resolved now issue, we have an understanding that it can wait until I emerge from the trance. Now for the update, thanks for sticking around. So the other day, things really hit the fan. My wife had been dropping hints about wanting to start a family and I've been on the fence, you know? Well, she decided to take matters into her own hands. She threw this huge dinner party, invited all our friends and family, and then right in the middle of dessert, she announces that she's expecting. I nearly choked on my pie. We hadn't even talked about trying yet. Now, I'm not saying I don't want kids, but the way she did it, it felt like she was trapping me. And the worst part, I can't even be mad because everyone's congratulating us. And she's got this glow, like she's already the world's best mom. I'm just standing there, smiling like a fool. While inside, I'm screaming. Back when I was married the first time, my ex used to pull stunts like this. She'd make these big decisions without me and then present them as done deals. I promised myself I wouldn't let that happen again. But here I am feeling like a doormat. And it's not just the baby thing, it's everything. Like she's been talking to this real estate agent about us buying a house. I come home one day and there's this guy in my living room, papers spread out talking about mortgages and interest rates. I didn't even know we were looking. She just assumed I'd be on board because, well, why wouldn't I be? It's like she's got this plan for our lives and I'm just along for the ride. I don't get a say because every time I try to speak up, she's got this way of making me feel like I'm being unreasonable. Like with the TV thing, she says I'm not paying attention to her. But when I'm trying to have a serious conversation, she's the one brushing me off. Then yesterday, I found out she's been talking to my boss. She thinks I should be going for a promotion, so she's been putting in a good word for me. I mean, I appreciate the support, but I can fight my own battles. It's like she doesn't trust me to handle my own career. I don't know, maybe I'm just not cut out for this. Maybe I'm not the partner she needs, but I can't shake the feeling that I'm losing pieces of myself, bit by bit. I love her, I really do, but I can't keep living like this feeling like I'm not in control of my own life. And then, as if on cue, her brother comes to stay with us. He's got his own set of issues, and suddenly, our place is his crash pad. I come home from work and he's on the couch, dirty dishes everywhere, and I'm supposed to be okay with it because he's family. I tried to talk to her about it, about all of it, but she just brushed it off, said I was overreacting and that I should be happy about the baby, the house, the job, happy that her brother has a place to stay. It's like my feelings don't matter. I'm at my wit's end here. I don't want to be the bad guy, but 
I can't keep going like this. Something's got to give, and I'm afraid it's going to be me. Thanks for reading. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.